Hi guys, it is a pleasant, cool Monday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is actually going on noon now and it is 70 degrees here on August 16th, 2021 in the sweltering summer of 2021 here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in upstate New York. Uh, where I just took off my goose down vest a, uh, a little while ago after spending a chilly night in the tiny house not realizing that Sancho Panza had stolen my blanket during the night. I was wondering why I was so damn cold because a little dog had stolen my blanket uh, which I really needed here in the middle of August. But anyway... Uh, it's going to be an easy chronicle of the collapse today because I love it when I'm talking about something and then open up the mainstream media and exactly what I was talking about, finally, the mainstream media catching up with Sam Mitchell. And this was The Guardian, and uh, we're going to talk about two things so I can give myself a pat on the back in more than one way about uh, <clears throat> figuring out how the planet works and how clueless morons responding to this. So this is the Guardian uh, looking at this new <coughs> U.S. census data, you know, talking about <coughs> the continued <coughs> outflow of, uh, of people uh, in the United States from the safest area to uh, to live in, and as we're going to get to in the article, the number one safest place to be in the United States, the number one safest place to be uh, here during the collapse is upstate New York. And that's going to be the second article I read. But what he's talking about uh, in this uh, in this article, what these demographers are talking about, is what is going on. The worse and worse the news gets every year, the hotter it gets, uh, the more wild, you know, all, all of this stuff. And what are people doing? They are heading the direct wrong direction. Uh, so anyway, this is the Guardian. Uh, explaining well, I guess asking the question, kind of, because there is no explanation. Uh, this is by David Sirota and Julia Rock, who are, I guess are, know something about what they're talking about. <clears throat> Parts of the U.S. are getting dangerously hot, yet Americans are moving the wrong way. <clears throat> science, you know that word science. Science has provided America with a decent idea of which areas of our country will be most devastated by climate change and which areas will be most insulated from the worst effects. Unfortunately, it seems that U.S. population flows are going in the wrong direction. New census data shows a nation moving out of the safer areas and into some of the most dangerous places of all. To quote planes, trains, and automobiles, we're going the wrong way. The Census Bureau's new map of the last decade's population, this is last decades, population trends shows big growth in the west and on the coast and declines in the inland east coast and Great Lakes regions. <clears throat> now compare, you know, those maps, which you'll have to go on the link to, I'll put the link in there where you can see these maps and try to wonder what the hell people are doing. Now compare that uh, two maps, which they also uh, link you to documenting the areas most at risk of extreme heat, wildfires, and flooding, and you see the problem. 
while there has been some recent anecdotal evidence of pragmatic climate migration, I mentioned this story, uh, I think it was just Saturday, I, I, I was talking about this story where they're claiming that, that people are moving out uh, of the, the, you know, of the unsafe areas and going in the right direction, but I could find nothing in the story to back up a little bit of anecdotal uh, evidence. While there <clears throat> has been some recent anecdotal evidence of pragmatic climate migration, overall, the census data shows America's population growth is shifting out of areas that may be the best refugees from the most extreme effects of climate change and into many areas that are most at risk. Put another way, if climate change were an enemy in a war, America is not fortifying our population in the safest places. The country's population is moving into the areas most at risk of attack. And speaking of the risk of attack, I think my uh, I think my microphone is at risk of attack. So I'm going to have to move around here and uh, try to get the microphone somewhat out of the wind. So I don't even know if you'll be able to see me here in a minute, but who cares whether you can see me or not. All you want to see is that damn little dog anyway. So uh, do a, a calendar switch. A chair switch here, camera switch. All right, let's get back to our story now that I've hopefully got the camera out of these whirlwinds blowing around upstate New York today. <clears throat> Some of the examples of people moving the wrong way are genuinely mind boggling. For instance, Upstate New York, upstate New York is considered one of the country's most insulated regions in the climate crisis. We'll get to that in our second story. And yet almost all of upstate New York saw population either nearly flat or in fact declining. You know, 126,000 people moving out of the state of New York last year. Uh, <clears throat> At the same time, there were big population increases in, around, in and around the Texas Gulf Coast, which is threatened by both extreme heat and coastal flooding. There you go, to move from Ithaca, New York to Houston, Texas. Similarly, Philadelphia is comparatively well situated in the climate crisis but it saw only modest population growth of 5%. It was surpassed on the list of biggest cities by, as I reported on Saturday, number one leading the pack, Phoenix, Arizona, which saw an 11% population growth, despite that city facing some of the worst forms of extreme heat and drought in the entire country, and I would probably uh, add future water shortages to that. And then there is South Florida, which saw Miami clock in a 10% population increase, <clears throat> despite the possibility that large swaths of that city could soon be underwater. Compare, compare that to a place like Vermont, where the population growth was flat. Now, this isn't to blame Americans for moving to climate-threatened regions. After all, population growth and decline is often driven by the quest for necessities, such as affordable housing and jobs. But the census data 
illustrate trend, a trend that has been exacerbated by public policy and then um, for, for instance weak zoning and land use laws have encouraged have encouraged a population explosion in the fire prone wildland urban interface areas near forest and other vegetation likewise federal flood insurance subsidies have encouraged continued construction in coastal areas threatened by flooding and corporations have not yet been forced to disclose their climate risks to investors which potentially allows them to make investment and location decisions without factoring in such vulnerabilities. Uh, then they go through a little bit of hopium, uh, you know, how they think they're going to, uh, to turn this thing around. Uh, and it, it, you know, it ain't gonna happen. I've, uh, I've been having the rant for years that once, uh, you know, about this flood insurance, which I just got right here in upstate New York. Last week, I bought me some FEMA underwritten federal, you know, federal underwritten flood insurance right here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, because they're still writing these insurance policies because if they stopped writing these insurance policies uh, you could no longer get a loan to buy anywhere and you know in coastal and waterfront properties and the real estate collapse you would see would make the Great Depression look like a bad hair day uh, nobody is talking uh, about this um, this catch. Well, it's, it's not a catch twenty two. Isn't exactly the word. It's just it, it, you know it, it, this is a hopeless situation as climate change, uh, as flooding and sea level rise and all of this. Uh, you know, Americans are getting sick and tired of bailing out, you know, people like me uh, and spending $600 to buy some of this FEMA back flood insurance. And, and, if, and if my house floods like it's already done four times, I'm going to get the American taxpayers ultimately to uh, guarantee, you know, paying me $35,000. But, but take, you know, take that out. Uh, particularly, uh, you know, what is the, what is the most valuable real estate uh, in the country? Where do these rich people want to live? They want to live on the coast, on lakes, rivers, you know what? Uh, and if the if any politician uh, responding to voter complaints about this bailout uh, for all of these rich people suggested that uh, the, the federal government was going to pull the rug out from, uh, from underneath all of these high-risk real estate loans that banks would stop lending on it and suddenly trillions of dollars worth of real estate in these areas would be worth nothing. They would be uninsurable, which means they would be unsellable. And uh, I anyway, I understand that about two people on the planet listening to this, uh, me talk about this, have any clue what I'm talking about. I, I am a real estate investor who has bought 22 houses and floodplains. Anyway, but we're going to go over to the Syracuse, uh, is it the Syracuse Times, whatever their newspaper is. All right. Upstate New York, named among best climate havens as the world grows hotter. There you go. Upstate New York, anybody looking for the best place to move to in the collapse of global industrial civilization in a planet, it's right here. 
right where I am, where Sandy is, where Basil and Karen are, where Brother JJ is. Uh, you know, there's a whole group of us uh, moving up here. And, and seriously, I mean, anyone listening to this who is thinking about this, come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Let me show you around. Uh, so anyway, take it away. Let's find out more about this. In a world racked by the extremes of climate change, upstate New York might become, I think it already is, one of the best places to live. That is according to technology and science writer David Pogue, a correspondent for CBS News, in an interview uh, with nonprofit news outlet Next Avenue about his new book titled How to Prepare for Climate Change, Pogue said, Cold, snowy Syracuse and Buffalo, New York could be shelters from the storms. Well, not shelters from the snowstorms. Okay, quoting, uh, quoting Mr. Pogue, quote, I looked at 15 climate haven cities in the sense that they have no wildfires, no hurricanes, and unlimited clean, fresh water, and they tend to be in the Great Lakes area. So here in the Finger Lakes, we are a little bit south. Of, uh, we're not considered the Great Lakes. We're the next... I, I, I guess then whatever you would call it, just south of the Great Lakes would be the Finger Lakes, which is where I am. Um, <clears throat> other climates, other climate havens besides Syracuse and Buffalo are Cleveland, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm, I'm sure River Hermit, would you like to weigh in? River Hermit, it, I think, is sweltering in her uh, in her little A-frame cottage uh, in a floodplain in Cincinnati today. But anyway, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Duluth, Minnesota, and Madison, Wisconsin are, are in a neck and neck with Syracuse and Buffalo. <clears throat> While Pogue specifically mentioned Syracuse in the interview. It is not among the cities detailed in his book. He does devote a page to Buffalo, though, talking about Buffalo. I have never been to Buffalo, New York in my life. Buffalo's prime spot on Lake Erie means that fresh water will never be a problem, that wildfire risk is minimal, and that water sports, fishing, and lovely parks are part of the portfolio. He writes in his Where to Live chapter for preparing for climate change, Where to Live. Uh, Syracuse topped a similar list back in 2013 when online real estate service Trulia named Syracuse the safest city in America from five major natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, forest fires, and earthquakes. Syracuse, I am about 55 miles from Syracuse. I am about 55 miles south of uh, the number one safest town from hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, fires, fires, and earthquakes. Now, of course, Bugs in a Jar Farm does have a flooding uh, risk, but, <clears throat> you know, I've got 14 acres here, and less than two of those acres are actually in the floodplain. Like 12 of my 14 acres are outside of the floodplain. Uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> back to... No, this is the... This is quoting from that, from that study from Trulia, quote, most metros were high risk for at least one of the five natural disasters, even though no 
metro area is high risk for everything. Uh, the metros at medium to low risk for all five disasters, uh, this is still quoting Trulia Real Estate, um, span Ohio, including Cleveland, Akron, and in Dayton, and again, upstate New York, specifically Syracuse and Buffalo, and other parts of the Northeast and Midwest away from the coast. So, uh, of course, New York City uh, is not, you know, upstate New York means inland from New York City is roughly what, when they say upstate New York, they mean getting away from the coast. Uh, in his climate change book, Pogue also noted that the cost of living is relatively low in upstate New York, citing Buffalo as 82% of the natural average. Uh, and Pogue's telling Buffalo is a great place to live despite or maybe because of its heavy lake effect snow. But of course, this is the reason uh, that I cannot live in upstate New York year-round is because we have to go through climate change every year in upstate New York and uh, that come November, you know, for almost half the year, thin-skinned southern boys can't live here. Uh, this is the, the problem. But my main place, you know, where I'm sinking my roots down, although I do have to get out of here, uh, in the, uh, <clears throat> in the winter, uh, Pogue concedes that no city or state will be spared the effects of climate change predicted to cause hotter temperatures, stronger hurricanes, and more wildfires. Uh, even the Great Lakes region is starting to experience what a hotter future will look like. You know, wasn't it uh, 100, was it 100 degrees in Minneapolis a few weeks ago? Um, and if you are planning for retirement, he said, do not flock with your fellow snowbirds down south. And, and I don't understand, one of us doesn't understand the meaning of the word snowbird. Uh, he's talking about do not uh, put all your eggs into one basket down south. Quote, Florida and Arizona, which along with Texas, you know, Florida, Texas, and Arizona are probably the three fastest growing states in the, uh, in the U.S. Florida and Arizona are the worst place for you to retire. It is time to totally reconsider what we consider our climate refuge as we retire. And uh, so at least with Florida, you know, spending your winter down in Florida, getting out of upstate New York and going to Florida, <clears throat> generally speaking, it's not hurricane season, uh, which is the big, which is the big banana in Florida is the, uh, is the hurricane season, which uh, usually winds up uh, in early November and doesn't start back up again till uh, late May, which is why I pull out of here in, in uh, early November and get back up here on May 1st. Uh, but anyway, I, it is good to be vindicated in that uh, your old chronicler of the collapse has figured out the number one safest place uh, to live out the collapse. But I am glad I have some flood insurance just in case. So get out there and plan your retirement for the collapse. 
while you still can and come see me and at Bugs in a Jar Farm and come meet me and Sandy and the rest of the gang and we will try to explain to you why we have chosen upstate New York, why, why all of these doomers are moving to this area. And it's beautiful and it's 70 degrees uh, on August the 16th. Bye, guys.